All right, I'm excited for this video and a little bit scared, but judging by the title and probably an okay-ish thumbnail, you know what it's about. Backstory, for those of you that don't know, I've been using the Kronos uh, 2.1 specifically for about two-ish, two and a half years now. And for a high-speed camera, I absolutely love it. Now, with that being said, there's competition with this. I have also purchased a free fly wave. Now, before we get into why I made such a stupid mistake of buying both cameras, I have never seen two cameras that are so close, just so competitive, and at the same time, two completely different cameras. I don't know how to describe it. To me, this isn't like choosing apples over oranges or even Mac over PC. This is like Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue. But there are a few things after using both of these cameras that I can't say are different but as well as very similar. So before we even start into the specs, I wanna go over what you get with each camera. I actually made a list for this and feel free to skip this if this is all very boring to you, but I feel like this is important to bring up. So first we'll start with the Wave. Let's start with the Wave. I even made a list for this. See, look, look how prepared I am for this. Not that I look any more professional with a, uh, with this shirt, I mean, but hey, I love this shirt. I've had it since high school, don't judge. Now with the Wave, you get the Wave, of course. Before there was a one terabyte version and a two terabyte, but from all I see right now, there's only the two terabyte version, so yay, more storage. You get the um, power adapter to, you know, plug it in the wall power with, uh, it's called just the circle jack. There it is. You get that mount shims, lens mount, or are they lens mount shims? Essentially, you would unscrew the bracket here and you'd put something to give yourself this, essentially like the C-mount spacers for the Kronos, is from what I understand. Um, as well as you get a USB cable to type A to type C, so you can plug it in through here to the type C to your computer. Um, you get a three mil hex driver. I'm pretty sure that's just to unscrew the front mount, but it might be to do the smaller ones as well. Yet one year warranty, I got this used, I didn't get it, but it's an excellent condition and it works completely fine. Also, what's included with the Wave? D-tap. So you can plug in your uh, V-mount batteries or whatnot, you know, to the camera and to D-tap. This is awesome. This is very awesome to have. And the fact that it comes with the camera is even better. Also, it has its own small rig, which is uh, just, you know, I've just gotten into like putting cages on cameras and I totally get why people do it now. I do think paying, you know, $100 for a piece of metal is definitely overpriced, but like I can see the use of it essentially. But the fact that it has a small rig stuff is awesome. But also with this camera, there's no external screen. You have to get your own, which at this point, if you're buying this camera, you, you would probably likely already have one. More importantly, also you get a traveling case. And so this is the traveling case. This is nice. I love this. Um, I'm not sure how their policy is when returning or fixing stuff, but like if you had to send it back in this, that's awesome. Pop it back in and you know, put this in a box and send it. Like, I think if I'm not mistaken, this is an actual Pelican box too. So like, it's good quality. Like I use a, I think Apache. This is like what, the best of the best. When I got the Kronos two years ago, and I'm not sure if this is still how you receive it, but it came in a cardboard box. <laughs> so yeah, right off the bat, I'm gonna, I still have a bunch of the, uh, seals and like paperwork and stuff on it but um it came in this box literally a cardboard box there's foam in it of course to keep it safe but it's just a cardboard box and i bring this up because when i thought i wanted to upgrade the ram from 16 gigabytes to 32 um i had to send it i was gonna have to send the camera back which by the way starting off shipping was 400 dollars and then on, that was on top of like the $800 RAM upgrade. But the one of the questions they asked was if I still had the original box. I'm not sure if Cron Technology still requires you to have their specific box. So actually I was able to consult with uh, Cron Technologies and though it's not at the moment, they did say you'd be able to get an additional hard case to come with your camera, which would be great. And again, that'd make everything easier for you know if you had to ship it back or just transport it. So that's awesome to hear. This just makes life easier if you have to send the camera back is what I'm saying than keeping a literal cardboard box uh, with foam in it. And by the way, I don't know how shipping works. Uh, it was only $400 because they're in Canada and I'm in the US, so that was like international shipping. So I get that. Now, with that out of the way, let's get to the Kronos. What does the Kronos have? Well, you come, you get your Kronos camera, which is, you know, whatever it's a, 
8 gigabyte, 16 gigabyte, 32. I already mentioned this is 16. With this camera, you get its, you know, wall power, your, uh, whatever you want to call it, you know, the little, I forget what these are called. The, the barrel jacks, is that what people just refer to them at, where you just, where it's just wall power or whatever, you get a cable for that to plug in the wall and charge it and use the camera. You also get a CS to C mount adapter, which from what I understand is just those little like rings that you like essentially boost it with. And then you also get a Nikon or a Canon uh, C to that mount. So like a C mount to Canon or Nikon, which is nice. You get a user manual, which I think you get with this, but if not, you can just download it from their website. You get one year uh, limited warranty, which is nice. Also, one thing you get with the Kronos that I still don't understand why they would even offer, get a 32 gigabyte SD card. Uh, this is worthless, truthfully. I think the worst part is it's, not even that fast, but I think it's not that fast because that's what the camera can essentially use, which is 90 megabytes might be the fastest. I don't know, I haven't tested that yet. Again, um, actually it could be useful if you don't actually plan on saving raw footage, but if you know, if you're just doing MP4s, then the 32 gigabyte SD card will be okay. I should mention not one to boot the camera, micro SD card, one to save footage on, but I will say already off the bat, if you plan on using this camera a lot, uh, don't even bother using SD card, get an SSD. But that's what you get with the Kronos. And so, like I said, this is just a two terabyte. This is a eight gigabyte, 16 gigabyte, and 32 gigabytes. Eight gigabyte doing 2.5 seconds, 16 doing 5.5, and 32 giving uh, 11 seconds most. Also, this does 1080 at 1,000 frames, so awesome. And then it also does, the lowest it can do is 24,000 frames. The wave, awesome. Good camera. So right off the bat, the huge selling point is 4K at 422 frames, but I'm just gonna round up and say 420 frames. Also, it does 1080 or 2K at a little over 1,400 frames. 1,461, but I'm just gonna say 1,400 because it's, again, rounding to that number. I should mention, too, at most, this does 9,200-some frames at a ratio of 2K to 128. Usually with a high-speed camera, you have RAM. So this, the Kronos, will record, and you can just, you know, record, I don't know, whatever. And then when you're done, you hit stop, and you go back and look through the footage, and it only records that certain like limit. So for example, eight gigabytes is 2.5 seconds, 16 gigabytes does 5.5 seconds, and 32 gigabytes does 11 seconds. With this, you hit record and you stop, and then you have your footage. It also has two terabytes of storage built in. I think you can actually upgrade. As they say, you can upgrade it, but you need a specific SSD. Oh wait, sorry about that. I got that information wrong. So actually, Though it is possible to theoretically upgrade your wave storage, uh, they actually recommend that you don't. And even though that they say so on their website, that's actually a mistake and apparently they're supposed to get rid of that. To be completely honest, I completely get that. I'm pretty sure it'd void your warranty, first of all. Two terabytes is honestly kind of a lot, so. But besides E-mount, it has a locking E-mount. I don't know what locking means, but like I assume in their case, it means this little wheel you turn. And when you turn this, it actually like, locks the cam like the lens and i will say sometimes it is a bit harder to get the lens out super secure though like i would trust like the heaviest of lens on this without like any worry at all i didn't mention this front part here and this right here this i have a um a nikon on it at the moment a nikon that's micro four thirds but this is a micro four thirds mount to the chronos camera which is really nice um I do have some things I like and don't like. For example, it's $245 for this mount. It's not electric and all it does is essentially make it easier. It essentially allows you to, you know, use micro four thirds, uh, like a mount to then like Nikon or something, which is good because at the moment I have this speed booster on it. So that helps a lot. But if you've noticed in the one video I made, I made this same exact thing with the same exact effect. Uh, for $12 and just a piece of aluminum that I drilled holes in. The other thing too is, like I said, with this being a locking E-mount, there are times where if I put a heavier lens on this, the whatever is connected to the mount right here will sometimes feel like really loose kinda and kinda have like a little bit of wiggle. Not too upset about, but it just makes me a little bit uncomfortable at times. The fact that it's, you know, you know, I feel like it should be just not wiggling at all. Actually, something cool about that, when I also consulted Cron Technologies, they said that I actually refined the MFT mount to where they're that little loose little wiggle room thing. 
uh, that doesn't exist anymore. So that's cool that they actually, you know, went back and took their time and fixed that. Um, so that's an extra $245. There's also, at the moment, no small rig stuff for this. So like an example, actually I gotta get up now. When I've been using this on shoots, this is my small rig for it. And I forget what specific thing this is, but it's like meant for Canon cameras. And I just modified it. I put some holes in it and this works fine. Don't get me wrong, but it sucks that there's just nothing specific for it. I did see some stuff like on Facebook that people made like a, I'm going to say cage very loosely. It's just like a top bar, a sidebar and something underneath. Like there's nothing to use over here, which I just, I don't understand, but they don't have anything for it. But also with this camera, um, built-in screen. So that's awesome. I like that. I also should mention, even though it's only one word on a page, um, you have to buy your own SSD and SSD cable to eSATA for this. That's just another expense. Let's talk about price. And this is very important, by the way. So when, this, when these cameras first came out, let me just say that. When these cameras first came out, you would be stupid not to buy a Kronos camera. And I say that because the starting, I think the starting price for the Kronos 2.1 for eight gigabytes was about $5,000. I got the mid tier version for $5,500. Um, and then I got warranty on it, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then I think the top tier was $6,100 or $6,000. Point being like the top tier just for the camera listing was like at most, I think $6,000. Don't quote me on it. Within the last year, they had um, issues getting parts and they had to increase the prices. So now the, if I'm not mistaken, things could have changed as of this video. The base tier for eight gigabytes for this is 6,800. Then the 16 gigabyte version is somewhere between like 7,400 maybe. For 32 gigs, the top of the line camera is $7,900. That's of right now. So the price has increased. And the reason why I say that's important because now since the Ember came out from Wave, this camera was originally $12,000. <laughs> um, spoiler alert, I didn't pay that much for it. Um, but now it's down to $8,000. I, mean, I think it's like $7,995, so $8,000. So as of right now, of this video, you can get this camera that was originally $12,000 for only $100 more than the top of the line Kronos cameras. But I just want to point out, I didn't even pay that much. I actually got one this in a bidding war on eBay and I only paid a little over $5,000 for it, which is a steal. And it still is a steal. Even if it went used, for example, which is usually like a fourth off of the price of like Abnorama, it would still be around $6,000 used excellent condition. But the fact that I got this for just over $5,000, I can't complain about my purchase at all. So this is where it was awkward before because like a little over $6,000, you can get the top line Kronos and this was worth double the price. I would say you'd be stupid not to get a Kronos. But now that this price has decreased and this price has increased, now there's a lot of questions to be answered. Before I get into too much detail, they're both really good cameras, but they're both completely different cameras, but at the same time, very similar. So now after that, I realized I've been recording for 25 minutes. So hopefully I can fit that down in a reasonable amount of time to where it's quick. And I mean, it's just information. So I, I'll try to make it enjoyable. So now that that's out of the way, let's start with the footage. Finally, the part that everybody's been waiting for the side by side comparison. I'll probably put it somewhere where you can just skip right to this, but uh, I feel like giving the information about each camera and what they come with was just as important as uh, essentially like how they perform. I should mention I made this test as even as possible for them. Let's start with just doing lighting tests. Two lights. I used a Godox VLC 150 and a Godox, it's like a, a Godox Mini, I think it's the ML30. So it's not too, too bright or too crazy. And I should mention both lights were at 85% power or brightness, whatever. Both shutters at all time were set to 180. And both cameras, I put a, uh, oh God, Roken on, Roken in. I, you know how I am with lenses. I can't never pronounce their names. So I'm gonna say Roke in on, Roken on. There we go, that's a word. I use this lens, 35 mil, um, 1.5, to 22. I should also mention before too, just like I mentioned, uh, that the Kronos had a speed booster, a 0.71 
Nikon lens to Micro Four Thirds. Uh, the Wave also will have a Nikon to E-mount speed booster 0.71. So they both essentially have the same exact speed booster, except this is for Sony and this is for Micro Four Thirds. The Ultrox version, not the newest one, the older one. It's definitely worth getting if you have either of these cameras. I should mention for this test too, the clips you are seeing are unedited. They are just the H.264 exports from the camera. So with this camera, first I did f22 at 1000 frames. That was the highest at 1080 at 22 and honestly not too bad. And then I went to 1.5. And at 1.5, it's, you know, I would say just about properly exposed. And then I went to 5.6. And honestly, it's a little bit dark, but definitely still usable. Now let's go to the wave and do the same thing except the max frame rate it can do at 4K is 420 frames. At f22, honestly, not too bad. But then here's something interesting. At 1.5, we're overexposed. I've never seen that before on a high-speed camera. And then, even more crazy, at 5.6, beautiful picture. That's the type of lighting I love to use. And it just looks essentially perfectly lit. Uh, it might need some adjustments here and there, but overall, fantastic. So now each camera, as you know, can essentially go lower in quality, but increase the frame rate. I didn't do the lowest quality because that would just look like garbage on both cameras, to be completely honest with the lighting I have. So I went from 1920, 1080 to 1280, 720 at 1300 frames. And again, both lights are at 85%. So at F22, honestly, not bad on the Kronos. Uh, it's dark, but you know, and then we go to 1.5, and that is a very usable image, but again, you have to remember you had a 1.5, so you have to make sure you're focused on whatever you're trying to focus on. And then at 5.6, it's a little bit too dark, but you could definitely make that footage work, I think, with some love and care. All right, now let's go to the wave and do the same thing, except we're going to be doing it at um, 2K, which essentially I'm just gonna say 1080. It's like 2041 to 1088, 1080, whatever you wanna call it. It's at that range. Uh, and then we're gonna do it at 1300 frames. So right off the bat at F22, uh, this looks like poo. <laughs> There's no going way around it and it just doesn't look good. At 1.5, we're definitely better. Uh, it, it just looks weird. And then at 5.6, I would just consider that not worth trying to fix. And that's just my opinion. So it's really confusing because after doing that test, I have a lot of I have even more questions, which is why I went further. It's really weird that this camera at f22 at 4K doesn't look that good, but it's overexposed at 1.5 to whereas the Kronos at 22, it looks fine. And 1.5 somehow isn't overexposed. It's just really weird how they both uh, like accept the light, I guess, with their sensors. But it, I, I don't, it's just really weird. I did something else. I did another test. I'm going to use these cameras to get the best possible picture at their highest frame rates at the best quality. What I mean by that is I use the Wave at 420 frames and I use the Kronos at 1920, 1080 and I filmed essentially like the same shots of just pouring coke into a glass with like ice. Let's look at the Kronos at 1080. This looks good. I'm happy with this. For 1080 footage, again, the only color corrections you might be seeing is I may have bumped the exposure up a little bit and the contrast. I tried not to do anything with the color. Now I will say as you're looking through this, the color definitely seems a little bit off. Like even after doing a white balance, like the red on the Coke bottle seems weird. And the color of the Coke in general just seems more amberish or orange. Now there is probably a way to fix that in the color matrix to make it look more color accurate. But um, from when I've been using this camera, I've never been able to get it as like accurate to one thing as to another. Where if like I made that look accurate, something else would look non-accurate. Overall, um, I'm happy with it. That is good 1080p, slow-mo footage. Now let's go to the Wave at 4K 20 frames. And I will say, this looks awesome. It looks smooth, it's slow-mo, the detail is completely there. The color, just right out of the camera at H.264, looks amazing. Like, I essentially did, like, barely any work. I barely bumped the exposure up as well as the contrast. I will say something immediately I noticed with each camera and looking at the footage is 
the Wave seems to handle darker colors better. For example, the Coke on the Kronos, you can see kind of like, I think they call it banding. You can see kind of the lines though, like across like the Coke part of, in the bottle. But like the Wave, it just kind of makes it, I don't know, like it's darker, yeah, but like you don't see that as much, which is honestly like, I like that, that's cool. Now there's another test I did. I also did the Wave at 1080p and tried to make it look as good as possible. And let's just say, well, I mean, you're looking at it right now. It doesn't look bad, but it's not as good as the Kronos. And as you're looking at this, you can be like, oh yeah, there's like a big difference between 1080p on the Wave and 1080p on the Kronos. Like, holy crap. And I should mention too, the Wave was at 1080 frames. So just 80 frames more to where like bumping it up or down to 1000 exactly didn't make much of a difference in gathering the amount of light. Um, but yeah, it just doesn't look as good. So this is my channel. And if it's one thing you've been noticing now is when I've been uploading footage for videos of the Kronos, you'll notice that they're all in 4K and the footage of the Kronos uh, looks like it's in 4K. Well, it's time to admit I've been cheating. Through the power of AI, I've been using Topaz Labs to take the TIFF files from the Kronos, throw them into Topaz Labs Video Enhance AI, the 2.64 version, the older version, not the newer one that sucks, and I've been enhancing the footage to 4K. Now let's look at the Kronos from 1080p to enhanced 4K footage. And honestly, this is awesome. This looks like literally a this looks 4K, I have no complaints. And just the details even there, like the details really good. And I'm overall really impressed with it. I will say it doesn't look as clean as the Wave, but like overall, like it looks good. That's good 4K slow-mo footage at a thousand frames. I'm happy with that. Now let's just say because I gave the Kronos the enhanced 4K footage, that means I should also give the Wave the same treatment. And I did. Now, looking at it, you'll notice that it looks better, but not as even close to as good as the Kronos does in 4K. And yeah, like, I'm happy with that result of like, okay, if I were to film with this in 1080 and then enhance it to 4K later on, I could uh, pass it off as 4K slow-mo footage. And again, you can be the judge as well with all these, but I overall think that that's passable 4K footage uh, that's been enhanced. You, you could just tell it has that, like, it looks like 4K, but not, like, super good 4K. And the best example I can think of with my own eyes, using, like, the Sony A7S III or the FX3 and the A7 IV, that 4K looks just amazing. And then you compare it to, like, the GH6, and it just looks like poo. When you enhance the 1080p footage, the 4K on the Kronos looks way better than the enhanced 1080p uh, to 4K on the Wave. But overall, the 4K looks better on the Wave than the enhanced footage of the Kerna. This is the part where not only am I going to then give advice, but I also would like, you know, essentially guidance in return. Being the person that I am, and I'm going to be married in like the next nine months, um, I can't afford both of these cameras, and I am going to have to get rid of one, and I don't want to. There's a few things to mention, so let's start with that. When purchasing one of these cameras, which one you should get? Because honestly, there is still competition here, though it may not seem like it. There is an absolute, still huge competition and difference between these cameras. So let's start with something real quick. If you're the type of person that's like filming a pizza commercial or like ice cream or a beer pouring, whatever, I do that type of stuff, I would choose the way for that because the 4K footage is good enough I like it at this 4K, and if I needed to, I could make it passable at 1080 and then, you know, enhance it if need be, or just use it at 1080. Now, I will say, if you're more into the science field, you would be dumb not to get a Kronos camera. And I say that because, uh, you, I mean, you saw the footage. When you essentially, when you lower the quality, essentially, to get more frames, the quality that it produces is awesome. It, it's unbeatable, honestly, compared to the Wave. It's awesome. So if you're the type of, you know, maybe you're a scientist and you want to attach this to uh, a microscope 
with the C-mount adapter part. And you want to get, I don't know, like a small reaction, you need like 10,000 frames, I go with the Kronos, 100%. If you're like more into the educational science field where like you just don't need to like hurry up and keep moving on set, the Kronos is for you. Truthfully, without the Kronos, I'd never be able to get like the uh, yo-yo shot at like 10,000 frames or whatever I think I did that and still have that much detail to look at exactly what's going on. So like in my mind, the Kronos is like the more true high speed camera over the wave. So then you're probably thinking my mind has been made up. I will take the less quality 4K Kronos camera over the wave. I would actually take the wave and that is for one specific reason. Let me just say, I do both of these things. I go on set and I shoot stuff that needs to be done really quick. And I also like to do, you know, essentially science experiments and have the really nice high speed footage at super high FPS. Thing that kills the Kronos and is making me choose the wave is the saving speed. You have no idea. That Coke thing where I poured it and you know, that was that, I shot it on the wave first. And at most, setting up the shot and pouring the coke with both doing it in 4K and 1080 took at most 10 minutes. The Kronos took about 40 minutes. 30 of those minutes were saving the footage. This is the issue with the Kronos camera. Saving the footage sucks so bad and it's so slow that I just, it, it's just not, it, at that point, it's not even worth it to have when it comes to being on set. And I realized this when, it, for example, one of the first things I did in slow motion was I just, I simply just watched somebody make ice cream. And the footage looked good, it looked great, but it took two hours to do because there are shots of the Kronos where the ice cream is, you know, spinning around and pouring, and it looks clean. But I had to save all 5.5 seconds of that. And each time you do that, I swear it takes like 10 minutes. I forget, I timed it. It takes a lot of time to save footage. Because I'm also just the person who likes to have safeties. With the Kronos, I do two saves, usually. I do an H.264 to have a backup save, just in case something happens, if the camera turns off, glitches out, whatever. And that goes really quick. If you want to do TIFF or Cinema DNG files, that takes forever to save. Part of it's the reason that, with the Kronos camera, it uses the fastest port that it has is eSATA, which is not that fast anymore. From that production standpoint, you have to save your footage right then and there to whatever file uh, type you want. But with the Wave, it being all in the camera, when you're done, you plug it in the computer and because the Wave has its own files, you get to choose afterwards of what files you like. Like, oh, do I want this as an H.264 or do I want to export it as a um, movie photo or uh, like a like a ProRes file, I forget what it's called, like movie, ProRes, whatever, like a 422 I think it is. But also, you can then keep the raw files and then, you know, open up whenever you want, again, later in um, the Wave player, and you can just, you know, re-export it in like 25 or 30 frames. Where this, it's like if you do H.264, you have to decide right then and now if you want it 24 frames, 30, 60, whatever. So like, some people complain about the Wave player, Honestly, my only complaint is, is there's no options. At the moment, it's using my 3060 Ti 8GB, and I'd rather have it use my 3090 so it exports footage faster. But it's still not that slow. But the fact that, like, it has its own custom files, which I honestly don't find as a bad thing, and I could just go back and, you know, make changes when I export it later, as well as adjusting the footage in the Wave Player. Holy crap, that's awesome! The Wave Player for adjusting footage before you export it actually is really good. In my case, I didn't do that for these clips. Essentially, these were the H.264 raw clips that I just exported from each camera and used that. Again, the only thing I changed was the white balance, the exposure slightly, and the contrast. Didn't touch any of the color or anything. With that being said, this is such a huge time saver. The fact that when I, I should mention, when you record with the wave, there's a record button, okay? So when you want to start recording, you start. And when you want to stop, you stop and then you could just hit record again and stop it right after. That like record, stop, record, stop is so amazing and so futuristic. I love it. And that's why when it comes to at the moment, unless again, somebody can change my mind about this, feel free to put your own opinion. I think these are great cameras, but for me who's on set and you know, like 
I, I, I hate being the guy that holds up set because I have to save footage. I, it sucks. The fact that I can just hit record and stop, okay, next shot. Looks great. I love that. That's awesome. And that's why at the moment, I'm sticking with the wave. Because yeah, it makes my workflow to where, you know, I make extra money doing my other side jobs. This is way better to have than this. Again, that is just my workflow. If you're somebody who's more into the science field, the Kronos, I would choose. Absolutely hands down. Now let's talk about something a little bit extra. These cameras, like I said, they're both really similar, but both really different. But I really wish we could just merge them together. Please correct me if I'm wrong, high speed enthusiast. I'm gonna use the Phantom camera for example. You can record at like a thousand frames at 4K or you can plug a Cinemag into it, I think still, and you can record it at like, you know, instead of a thousand frames at 4K, you could do 500 frames, but like the saving is instant essentially and it just records onto that. If the Kronos camera, they made a newer one, had like a way to plug in an M.2 just straight into the camera or like a USB type C cable to unplug to plug in like a high or high speed SSD. If they had something like that where you could just choose to record off the RAM and keep it at a thousand frames or do like 500 and just save right onto that like SSD like that at a lower frame rate, that would be awesome. And I would definitely choose the Kronos over the wave. The Kronos quality is there, especially for 1080p, but like the saving speed just kills it. That's literally what kills it for me. And I hate that. But if there is a way to be like, I will sacrifice frames to have my footage save instantly, for example, when I'm like on a set, I would, everybody would take that hands down. Don't get me wrong, a thousand frames looks way better than 420 fr frames in slow motion, but sometimes, you know, you don't need that thousand frames. Sometimes you do, don't get me wrong, you need that sometimes, sometimes you even need more. But all I'm saying, if there is a way to have the Kronos do RAM save, but as well as having like a, a plug-in way to bypass the RAM and just record straight to like an SSD, th 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 it would be a phenomenal high-speed camera. If you are buying also a high-speed camera for the first time and you have no idea, this is awesome to have. It's This is essentially, more an all-in-one than the Wave. First of all, it has a screen so you can see what the hell you're doing, but also the grip of it. Like, look, I mean, don't get me wrong, it looks like a brick, I know. But like, the way you can just hold it and you know, like record all your ports over here, the lens, this is a run and gun high-speed camera. And I've used that when I first got it all the time like that. This on the other hand, first of all, the one thing I don't like about the Wave design is this looks like how you're supposed to hold it, correct? Record button up here, settings. That makes sense. But all the ports are on this side. So like if the ports are sticking out, like you've got to hold it kind of awkwardly. Again, there's also no screen. So you have to buy more for that. So essentially I will say for a starter camera, the Kronos is the way to go because it, tr it truly is the all-in-one more budget high-speed camera where like all you, it comes with everything you need besides a lens. And you put the lens on and you can theoretically, you could save to the SD card, again, wouldn't recommend, even if it was H.264. Um, but you could you could do that, and that's awesome. That is a huge step in like high speed, like just technology. And that's, you know, like, let me know your thoughts, please. Like, which would you guys choose? As well as like, which do you think looks better? And even like, what would you do if you were in my situation? I, again, I think I've made my choice where I am probably gonna keep the wave. By all means too, I'm not getting rid of either camera immediately. So if there's another test you want me to do, please, by all means, let me know and I'll do it while I have both cameras. Um, I'd be glad to. If you don't wanna give advice, please just subscribe. But that's gonna do it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.